your guys' experience, your life experiences, what do you think printmaking is? Good. Um, I think it's the act. It's like, I've seen on some, some kind of the, the things where you um, put the pa piece of paper on the uh, like gravestone, like this is what my grandpa does. Um, he puts it, the piece of paper on the gravestone and rubs it mm -hmm. on it like that. So it um, makes the print of, gives it all the bumps and all that. It makes the print of it and it shows what it looks like. Yeah. Do you have another idea? What do you think printmaking is? Um, well, similar to what Owen said, um, but I see paint, so probably you're going to need painting the surface underneath mm -hmm. instead of stretching it, so the paint gets transferred onto it a little bit and it looks better. I like how you added on, but also used observations to figure mm -hmm. some of that out. Nice. Yeah, so printmaking, um, what it is in its essence, already. <laughs> I forgot about it. Um, so in its essence, a print is a work of art or text on paper that has multiple examples of it. Um, so think of, just to kind of put that in context, think of your printer at home, how you have an image file, and then you can print out many different images um, from that same file. But when you make it by hand, everyone is going to be similar, but a little bit different. So that's what kind of makes it more interesting when you do it by hand. So there are tons and tons of different types of printmaking, but we're going to be doing a type of printmaking called relief printmaking. And what relief printmaking is, it's kind of like a stamp. Um, basically, you can, uh, and that is what it is, it's a stamp. Um, and it's been around for a really, really long time. So this is an Egyptian seal that was made in 1850 BC. Piper, what do you think they use this for? Um, Stamping, maybe to like burn something, or you could like burn it and burn your seal into like wood or something, or like to burn something. Oh, so like maybe heat it up a little bit and then somehow put it onto wood or stone so that these are in trapped in there. Is that what you're saying? What do you think? Or just like like. To put like a footprint, um, you fold it, um, stamp it into something like with clay. Mm -hmm. Even when it's like dry, you can still stamp something in there, and it'll stay, and the mark will stay in there. So I think I think they might use the um, the clay to they do that. So they put the Egyptian seal on there, mm -hmm. so that it shows their ownership. So I hear both of you guys saying that you think somehow they're transferring this to another surface. You don't know quite how, or you guys have different ideas about how, but somehow you're taking this thing and putting it on other surfaces, right? Yep. That's 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 pretty right. Um, so these these images that are around there, if, if you could, if you knew what they meant, you would be able to read it just like you read a book. Um, and what it really says, if you could read it, is that this is the seal of a mayor, um, and the seal is kind of like a signature. So he would, it was his way of, if there was a document or something that he was checking, he could kind of put, stamp his seal on. So he would take it and he would um, put it in ink and then stamp it, and it would tell everybody that he had seen it and he had approved of it. So that's what a seal is. So then this is a Roman seal. This was made 2,000 years after that last one, so these are very popular things, these seals. Um, but Rome, not Egypt, but the same concept where this is this is somebody's seal, so it's one person's and it's their way of kind of putting their stamp on things. Then in India, they used to do a lot of wood block prints, um, and that's exactly what it sounds like. They would take a big block of wood and they would take sharp objects and they would literally carve out these really, really intricate designs, and then they would stamp so them nice. multiple times on fabric. Um, this is not the same design, obviously I just couldn't find the same one, but the, it, this is what that would look like. Where it's like a wood block that they would stamp more than once. I feel like we have something similar to that. Yeah, I, the, these things are still around, both of them, both the seals and the, um, and the wood blocks, but it's just kind of showing you how long these relief prints have been around. 
then we come to things that have more imagery in them. Um, this is a this was made in Germany in the 1600s, and the artist was named Albert Durer. And in the 1600s, not many people could afford art because there was no cameras, there was nothing around. What if you wanted art? It was basically a large oil painting, which would take a really long time to make. So only very, 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 very wealthy people could afford art. So what this guy did was he started taking these oil paintings that only the very wealthy could afford, and he started making stamps out of them or prints. And then all these people that could never afford art could afford like a penny for a print. Yeah, penny um, a print. Penny a print. <laughs> so it became a very, very popular way of um, okay. spreading art around, and it still is. So that brings us to what we're doing today. Um, before I move on, though, do you guys have any questions about the history of printmaking? Comments? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, about the question, um, with the Roman seal, I can see how people would seriously um, with, the, with that Roman seal, they did, I can see, see how they kind of skipped over it because when you when you're looking at that, you can definitely see that it's just like like stamping it in. But one question: Uh huh. Is it clay or is it chocolate dough? What do you think? <laughs> Probably clay. But Why do you say clay rather than chocolate dough? I mean, it's the Romans. Like, didn't their empire long ago? Uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much so. So you're saying since they're no longer around, it must be clay, not chocolate dough? Yes. Okay. Sadly. What do you think, Piper? Clay or chocolate dough? <laughs> clay. Clay. <laughs> Sadly, it's clay. <laughs> All right. Clay it is. We come to a consensus. Okay. So we're making... Um, a print that's kind of halfway between the stamps that we saw and the really intricate um, etching that Albert Dewar would make. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with a piece of paper. Um, I have some books for you guys if you uh, don't have any ideas about what you want to draw, but you're welcome to just go forth and do whatever you would like. You're going to take a pencil, you're going to make a design on your paper. You can use as many pieces of paper as you need. This is kind of your rough draft. Once you have an image that you like, you're going to get one of these styrofoam plates. Um, these styrofoam plates are very, very sensitive. I'm going to use this one because it's already a little bit damaged, but you can see that I just had it in my bag and it already has, it's kind of like dinged up. So just be careful. You're going to put it over. You're going to press down kind of hard. Make sure you get an impression. And you're going to trace around. Once you get it, you see it has an impression in that. Yeah. Like that. Um, if you need to, you can actually draw right on the plate too. So if you don't think that you press down hard enough, you can go back into it. When I was a kid, they gave us those, uh, the big plastic or rubber or something, and those like etching, etching tools. It was red. Oh, ours? They gave black. us little kids sharp etching yeah. tools. Yeah. <laughs> and some linoleum blocks probably we would yeah, heat, yeah. heat them up heat yeah, up the uh, uh, sheets so that it was a little bit easier to carve out oh, um, yeah. oh I, I actually was thinking about doing linoleum blocks but I got too scared with this <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if we'd have the younger kids here too I think you oh, guys yeah. probably could have handled it but okay so we have some um, we're going to be doing our prints back there and we have a lot of different plates set up because we only have three col well three colors and then black and white. Do you guys know what why I would put out red, blue, and yellow? Anyone have any ideas? Mm. Go ahead, Piper. They are primary colors and if you mix them in certain ways it can make other colors. You got it. So <laughs> we have we have those primary colors so you can mix colors if you would like. Um, you don't need a lot of ink, just a little bit to start like that, and then you're going to roll it out. Now, you can leave a chunk at top. You don't have to have the whole thing rolled out. The first time. 
time you put ink on the plate, you might need a little bit more. But after this, if I were to add ink, I would still probably have a chunk of the top. Listen very carefully to it. Do you hear that sticky sound? Do you hear the sticky sound? Yeah. That's what you want it to sound like. You want to hear that kind of like when you're rolling it. You want to roll it onto the paper. You want to roll it in one direction. You need to get more ink, you can. The reason you don't want to roll it in multiple directions is because we don't want ink to go into those lines. We want it to stay on the surface. So get it nice and covered. I'm going to take my paper. I'm going to put this on top. And then you guys have some clean rollers that I did not grab, um, but you're going to, it's okay, I can do it with my hand. You're going to actually take one of these clean rollers and you're going to run over the top to make sure it's nice and even and pressed down. But I'm going to use my hand since that's what I have available. <laughs> and you lift it up. And yours will be a little bit more crisp because you're going to be using that. All right. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, so we, go ahead. When we start? We start in like about two seconds. Um, this is going to be the drawing table. Um, and we're going to keep it kind of paint free so that it's paint free. You can draw. Uh, when you're ready, you can go back there and you can use any of the rollers that are out. Um, we have a clean table with clean rollers to the left hand side that you can use to press down on your paper. Um, you can make as many as you'd like. And when you have them, you can pin them on the wall so that they can dry. You guys got that? Got it. Yeah. All right. Do you have it? Um, wait, yes. This one. All right. Cool. Books. Books. And How do you first have some more? No, 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 no. no.